are we talking about? What are we talking about? What we discussing? What we discussing? What is we doing today? Get that money. Get that money. What are we talking about? Hello everyone, welcome to White Color Rhymes. My name is Rob Gibson. Beside me is MCD. Hello everybody. And today is a very special day. Yeah, today I will be introducing one of my favorite artists of all time to this man back beside me. Yeah, I thought In... you were going to say I'm going to introduce one of my favorite artists to Lil Peep. <laughs> and I was like, mate, that's oh. very kind. <laughs> very kind of you. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be reacting to Lil Peep. I am probably one of the biggest Lil Peep fans out there. I'm actually going to claim that. What do you know of Lil Peep already, if anything? Nothing. I know that he sadly passed away far too young. Um, that's about it. Like, for a bit of context for people watching the video, I've been rapping for, like, 20 years now. Um, but I kind of, around 2010, I sort of became disillusioned with music and just kind of stopped keeping up with current trends and stuff like that. So I'm looking to, like, just rediscover all the artists I missed basically and Lil Pete was obviously a big one culturally and um you know significantly so Rogue has kindly offered to uh let me let me react to him for the very first time today. Kindly you mean I forced you to <laughs> yeah but I know nothing like literally I might have heard okay. one of his songs but it had never registered it was Lil Peep or I doubt you have heard one of his songs because he hasn't really been played on the radio over here or anything so okay other than like falling down which isn't even in this video anyway um so yeah just a little bit of context he made music for like two years before he passed he was only 21 when he passed Damn, um yeah uh he had let, let's be honest uh right now you're gonna go through seven songs which are all extreme like mo some of these are like really depressing but it, it was kind of his thing mm -hmm. uh and you're probably going to hear about drugs quite a lot because he was an addict. Yeah, okay. And a lot of it was forced on him by his label because they, like, tried to keep control of him by uh, feeding him drugs. So, yeah. Uh, I'll let you know some information, like, before every song we play. But, yeah, that's just a rundown. He was a generational talent from SoundCloud, one of the pioneers of emo rap. You, you were familiar with emo rap, but before it was... Big yeah, actually. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Like, uh, I made an album in like 2006, and people affectionately online and maybe very over the toply called me the king of emo rap. But it sounds way different to actual emo rap that came about a bit later. Uh, yeah. You know, on record, I am not claiming I invented emo rap, so please don't <laughs> <laughs> take credit for it. It's just that uh, my I think mine was more like angry metal depressed rap it was more like it was it sounds nothing like you know emo rap. juice world yeah. Mm, oh, yeah so yeah uh without further ado i think we should just get into the first song all righty um so this song is called awful things it's featuring lil tracy them two were literally glued together while they were alive well while uh people was alive tracy's still going um this was the first song, well, no, it wasn't the first song I heard by Pete. It was the song which, like, made me a fan because I'd heard of his music before from, like, reaction videos to Cuff, like, from Cuff Boys. Then this YouTuber I watched called I'm Dante, he reacted to this, and I was like, oh, shit, I've heard this guy before, but this is something else. And I remember thinking at the time, it's like Good Charlotte mixed with rap, and it's mm -hmm. just, I'd never heard anything like it before. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is... Awful things. This is off his debut album, Come Over When You Saw the Part One. All right, let's do it.
gonna be explicit here. That's a weird drum pattern change. Mm. What is that sample? Because I recognise it. It's not a sample. Those three chords are definitely very familiar right at the beginning. So, that was Awful Things, featuring Lil Tracy. What do you think? Yeah, no, it was good, you know. I know you um, said it reminds you of, well, like, when you first heard it, you thought it's, like, good, I'm not saying this song, but, like, I feel like that song, anyway, shares more with grunge than it does with emo, for example. Hmm. Good Charles actually covered this at his funeral, actually, I forgot to say, which is crazy, because I thought that at the time, and then... Yeah. yeah, like, I swear that's a sample, some of that. Are you sure? It, it Everything on Come, Come Over When You Sober is not a sample, but it, it's definitely inspired by... Yeah, fair enough, because it sounds... I just so Googled it. And... Sounds so familiar to... Unless it's a beat I've used in the past that has sampled that, somehow. Maybe. But um... I know one song which you will have heard that has, like, a similar melody, and it's... You know, you on know, the Tuesday actually, show... You know what it is? It's, um... It's fuck. What's it called? Nobody's Fool by Cinderella. Dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah, yeah, okay. Weird, but um, I love that song. So like, that was kind of weirdly cool to hear something very similar underneath. Um, yeah, definitely. In my opinion, it sort of shares more with grunge. Obviously, I can hear like the Good Charlotte thing with the sort of. They want to call them a gang vocal hook, but there's a lot of layers and it's in his voice to give it that sort of almost crowd vocal sound on the hook. He does um, that a lot. Yeah, no, it sounds cool. Yeah. Like, it's weird because it's that kind of singing, not out of tune, but it's slightly more loose. It's not like polished and like. It's more natural, which I think gives it a more sort of emotional edge. But yeah, no, it, it was very, like, it was mixed really well. I'm not saying, like, it was loose as in not polished, because it was polished. Mm. But he has a sort of, I don't know, what, a lackadaisical tone to his vocals, which is cool. Um, you know, he's got... He's got a lot of tattoos. My my grandma would be rolling in her grave, I'm sure. Um, but no, the beat was great as well. It's actually like for like emo or depressing. It's very colourful. Mm. Like there's a lot of vibrant colours and um, visually it's quite like cheerful. So it's kind of there's kind no, of, mean, yeah. yeah there's kind of like a weird juxtaposition between the sound 
the lyrics and how it looks visually but it works mm. and obviously like it's set in a high school and stuff so it takes us back to the folly of youth and the um emotions we went through as i mean you you're not long out of being a teenager but um yeah. for someone like me you know being a teenager and feeling those things um but no i thought it was cool i like that more than i expected to uh you mentioned he has a lot of tattoos i should have gone over this first but um he has this one tattoo here which says cry baby it says what uh, Sorry, it's actually he's got... you said it oh it says cry baby i've got like a thing that that um... got that tattooed um he had got that tattoo to stop himself from getting a real job just so he'd be forced into making music you know because like it's pretty it, genius. it's weird but it's, it it's is a, yeah a bold strategy because that might not it is. work but it worked Sadly, it worked for him um, it probably worked in um too well yeah um so yeah also that tattoo inspired you know post malone has the tattoo of his thing because uh, he, he was yeah. friends with post malone and uh fat nick has the same tattoo as well okay if you're familiar with fat nick i don't know nope fair enough Sorry. um <laughs> No, tattoos, I love tattoos, so I've got 10, 11 myself, just not on my face, but I wouldn't be opposed <laughs> to getting one, like, it's, you know, I don't have a, an issue with people who get tattoos on their face, they're just fucking, mm. it's just art on a canvas. True. The next song we're going to be listening to is called Beamer Boy. Now, this is an early peep song, so this is, I think, 2016, just as he started blowing up a little bit, like, Started to get fans and that. Uh, it was with Schema Posse at this time, with Jay Green and Ghostman. Uh, you will know of some of the beats from them because Endless Grudge produced for Schema Posse. Okay. So you know Endless Grudge. Um, so yeah, this this is uh, the, the music video is one of the music videos of all time, but it, it's a visual a visual thing. So yeah. All right. Okay. It, it is weird. Yeah. This is Beamer.
Okay, so that was Beamer Boy by Lil Peep. Samples the microphone's Headless Horseman. That's the song, Headless Horseman. Okay. Um, like what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm a Beamer Boy. I have a poor man's Beamer. Um, throwing that out there. But um, no, uh, yeah, that was like how I would describe... When I was younger, we used to go out like on a Saturday, for example, and get absolutely fucking smashed. And then the Sunday, we'd all hang out together, feeling a bit rough, hungover, and maybe, you know, have a smoke and stuff. And it's kind yeah. of like that come down next day music to me. That's what it reminds mm. me of. It's kind of like more background listening while you're doing something. That's not to say like, it's not interesting and you just put it on in the background it's because it's like sonically it's a vibe like it relaxes you it's chill it's got that nice he maintains the same flow all the way through so yeah. it's kind of like to create like a a journey or a, a smooth experience all the way through at the same uh like energy level and stuff like that and it's not, you know, I don't think any of his songs are going to be like bars, are they? Like, I don't think no. that's what he is. Um, <clears throat> says it how it is, usually. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. relatable. It's like just an everyday person, everyday young person struggle. And it's that was just a chilled, nice, relaxing vibe. You know, you could drift off to that. You could smoke a big weed. I haven't smoked weed for a very, very long time, but you could do that and like just chill. You know, you could stick your favorite game on your Xbox and just play with that in the background sort of thing. And I think that's what that kind of sound is created for. I could okay. be wrong, but that's what, um, that's what it would. It's funny you say that because in concert, this is one of the most hype songs. The, the, yeah, well, yeah. That's, that, that that surprised me. Yeah, you should see the uh, the audience when this song plays. It's it's crazy. I wonder why. Is there a specific reason or? I, I don't I don't know. I, I never heard this is a chill song, so it's interesting to your. Uh, see, I really no, do. I've, that's that is weird maybe i guess maybe it's just like between my generation and your generation something's obviously changed uh the way maybe we interpret music if that makes sense i can understand that it is kind of chill but yeah it, it is one of his most hype songs in concert at it's least weird. yeah because even the video was very like I don't, I, I'm gonna say lazy, but I don't mean that in a horrible way. Like, I just, just mean random words popping up yeah, on the screen. It just feels like it, to me it was just created just to as like see every every word I say is gonna sound like I'm slagging it off, but I'm not. Like low effort. I know it's not low effort, and I know he put like a lot of effort into the lyrics and the sound and the melody and like, but it's just got that nice chill out vibe to me um, at my age at my ripe old age yeah so but i liked it again i liked it i liked the beat i liked the um that little weird synth thing that came in yeah, the... yeah, yeah. 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 yeah like, that was kind of 80s sounding to me but i'm it's yeah it's the sample from the microphones headless horse one which i'm not just too sure when that came out but yeah no i um... dug it it was cool okay yeah, that was within his first seven months of making music, that song. Was it really? See, that's that's yeah. impressive to me because, it, yeah, just seven months. Um, mm. I think, like, when I started being a rapper in the early thousands, a lot of people who became rappers at the same time were focused on bars, like you that was it you had to like have the best bars or otherwise you weren't really worth talking about and i think it's different here it's more about creating a sound and a vibe mm. so no that, that is impressive like for just seven months i didn't sound anything <laughs> anywhere near that good 
Yeah, he doesn't focus on, like, I don't think he's ever tried bars, really. Uh, no. He's kind of just, like, talking about how he feels in songs. And as I've got older, I care a bit less about bars, I think. Yeah. I just want to put something on that sounds good. Mm. So, yeah, no, I liked it. Okay. Uh, this next one is called Runaway. Now, this is an older Peep song again. But it was taken down after he died, and then they reproduced it. Smoker Zack produced it, the same guy who produced the first song. And then they make, made a music video for it. Uh, so this was one of the first songs to come out after he died. But okay. yeah, um, it's an older song. So he actually heard the original yeah. version isn't too different to it with the beat. It's just it's slightly more polished, the beat. Okay. But yeah. All right. All uh, right. His mum made the music video. Oh, yes. really? Okay, that's yeah. a nice touch. It is. Okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah. That's his producer, Mark Zach. Okay, uh, so that was Runaway by Lil Peep. What do you think? Yeah, that was my favourite so far. Mm. Um, just everything about that was dope. The video was especially cool. As you say, it was done by his mum. Um, yeah. Like the whole kind of scrapbook aesthetic was really oh, cool. Oh, um, just to say this, because uh, all them drawings were like drawings he did as a kid. Yeah. So every drawing in the video, like... Just walking around. Uh, they're also on the album cover of Come Over When You Sober Part 2. So he's a creative okay. kid as well then. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was really cool. Like, 
obviously scrapbooks are synonymous with memories and personal memories i feel like not mass produced how corporations would want you to view memories it's not like a polished product it was like really personal and i think that was for his fans if you know what i mean mm. um i'd say like it's weird i want to say i know all of this stuff is way closer to rock than hip-hop in my opinion yeah it, it, like, it was part of rock culture more than rap yeah. culture like obviously the beats are hip-hop with some grungy elements i'd say but yeah. like his delivery and the whole sound sonically and the subject matter is much closer to rock because i when i grew up and i i feel like he w he is just like embodying young person struggles you know like and that's why a lot of young people probably gravitate towards him and what he's saying whereas you know when i was younger it was like i don't know like bands like corn and stuff who were like the big thing then for teenagers to vent their angst and sadness and if they felt a bit like outcasts and stuff like that so i think he's just a continuation of that in music i'm not saying he mm. copied them or anything or yeah. even inspired was inspired by them i'm just saying there since since i don't know when but there's always been like a a musical niche for outsiders and depressed people to gravitate towards in my day it was yeah. like new metal in the uh, mid mid thousands it was emo and scene and stuff so he's just like the next one i think the next big culturally significant one the Rolling Stone famously titled him j two days before he died. Actually, the uh, this generation's Kurt Cobain. Yeah, that makes sense. I was going to say grunge before new metal. So yeah, it was it was inspired by uh, Nirvana, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, obviously emo bands, and then he kind of mixed it with like Chief Keef and like Gucci Mane, people like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's where his like influences from. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. I feel if I was your age, I would have loved him. Yeah. You know, like, it's just obviously, I, I, and I probably would have liked him if I'd kept up with music. I just hadn't, so he's kind of slipped under the radar. Um, mm. But yeah, the whole sound's just cool. It's just nice. It doesn't like, oh, it's hard. I, I'm just going to keep saying it's vibey, because it is. It's like, you know... Um, it's not angry and in, in my mind it's not angry and aggressive like i know you say his shows get hyped and everyone you know is going fucking nuts you, you're gonna see one of his shows because one of the future music videos do show some shows so okay. yeah um but it's not like angry and the music i used to listen to was like fuck you mum i don't want to do my homework kind of you know what i'm saying like lincoln park and stuff yeah um <clears throat> it's not quite the same it's it's kind of more restrained and maybe a bit more deeper and intricate than like surface level anger and angst which is cool no i liked it i really like that one mm. uh the one lyric that stands out to a lot of people but well, there's two lyrics is i was dying and nobody was there mm -hmm. and the other lyric is i do the drugs but not one of this especially hits harder after you know how he died he was on the tour bus with um lots of the people that he'd had like falling out with like people in his label and that they'd like took him away from his friends uh then like shoved him with loads of you know people who were just kind of there you know for clout chasing i think uh betsy yeah. who i know a lot of people hate him because he he filmed little peep after he died but he didn't know he was dead Mm -hmm. He was there, uh, and he was like, oh, he's, he's working out in the back of, back of the tour bus, and then filmed him while he was like that, but he, you could clearly see he was, he was dead. Um, so yeah, he was, he'd gone for a sleep in the back of the bus, and he was left dead for four hours really? before anyone even found him. So the, I was dying and nobody was there lyric is one that, like, hits home for a lot of people. Foreshadowing. Yeah. 
It's um sad. I I keep forgetting he's just 21. 21. Yeah. I was I could barely dress myself still. You know, like so, I'm not even 21 yet. No, that's what I mean. So for him to have like all that responsibility on his shoulders when I feel he was already probably like I mean going by his music he was obviously vulnerable um is a lot for a 21 year old and yeah. it's sad that he was I'm assuming he was surrounded by a lot of like yes men and stuff rather than people who would help him like properly and it's, yeah. it's just it's just shit really isn't it yep uh, yeah. Anyway, I think we'll call episode one there, and then we'll go on to the next episode. So, yeah, um, see you all in the next one. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Peace. Peace. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we discussing? What are we discussing? What are we doing today? Getting that money. Getting that money. What are we talking about? What are we discussing? What are we discussing? What are we doing today? Getting that money. Getting that money. What are we talking about? What are we talking about?